All right, welcome into the show, Creative Crypto here. And we have a lot of stuff to talk about today, guys. There's a lot of stuff to cover. So listen in, make sure you listen to the whole episode here, and we're going to get into it. So first thing, if you've seen the news, you know that the Mixer Token team, which is the Pulse 3D team, has decided to end the development for Mixer Token. And there were some issues with the Solidity contracts and things. Now, they probably still could have made the Mixer Token, but it was going to take a very long time. And it just was going to take a lot of stuff that they didn't want to go through at the moment. And they felt that it was fair to the community to just issue refunds so people weren't waiting for a long time. So that's a very honest thing to do. You know, most projects, if the development goes wrong, they just end up keeping your money and they end up just stealing your money and you don't see any of it. But with Mixer Token and the Mixer Token community and the Pulse 3D team, they're very honest. They are very honest and transparent and they have your best interests at heart. So, and of course, I'm part of that team. Give suggestions and things. And yeah, I was I was on board with issuing refunds. You know, wasn't easy to do, of course. And I hope you guys do appreciate that because, like I said, a lot of projects would have just stolen your guys' money and you guys would never have heard from them. So you're with the right team. You're with the right team. And that's what you got to look for in these type of projects, you know, because the team is really the project, guys. Okay, because they could have, you know, a flashy website and a huge community and this and that. But you know what? If the team that runs it isn't solid and isn't genuine and doesn't have your best interest at heart, you're not going to make any money and you're going to actually lose a lot of money because they'll probably end up stealing your money or rugging you. The most flashy looking, sexiest websites are always the ones that scam. It works so well, man. It's just the, the flashy website. Everything works great. But you know what? It ends up being a scam because all they care about is putting out a very great looking product to draw you in. Instead of putting out something that actually works from the smart contract side and the team behind it has strong hands, and has a long term vision. So that's what you got to look for. All right. So there's a project that they came out with here, Base 3D. We're going to get into this. We're going to get into this. And I'm going to tell you guys why this is really, really great opportunity. And I'm not just saying that because I'm on the team. OK, I'm saying that because it actually is. OK, this is the perfect timing for an, a project just like this to build on base. You want to build on base chain, guys. All right, so we're going to talk about that. All right, but first, let's talk about Hex, and let's talk about Pulse Chain and why the team from Pulse 3D decided to pivot off of Pulse Chain. Not completely. Pulse 3D is still here. Pulse 3D is still kicking and going well. But as far as building other DeFi applications and putting in the time and the sweat equity and everything else that goes along with building a project, okay? Since I've been on the team and helping them work with it, it's tough, guys, okay? It's much easier to just be like most of the people in crypto and just be an investor and not get involved in anything and just sit on the sidelines and just decide what to put your crypto in and when to pull your crypto out and this and that. Yeah, that's easy. Man, that's what I did for a long time, okay? But I decided to take a risk and I decided to jump into something and get inside of one of these projects and actually work with the team. Okay, it's not easy. It's not easy. You put in a lot of work. You don't get much reward out of it financially. Okay, in the very beginning stages, of course. All right. And honestly, you might not get anything out of out of it ever. Okay, that's a risk. But you know what? It's a good risk to take and it's a good learning experience to actually try and do something instead of just being an investor on the sideline. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with just being an investor. It's easy. It's a safe route to go. Of course, you have risk involved of being an investor as well. But I'm just saying for somebody to just, you know, actually jump into one of these projects and try to work with the team and try to do stuff. Okay, it's not easy. I'll tell you guys, it's not easy. Some people may think it's easy. It's not. Trust me. So I want to talk about Hex and Pulse. So a couple days ago when Base 3D first launched, I did send a voice message to both communities and kind of just wanted to share my thoughts on Pulse Chain and Hex and everything, Richard Hart, and just kind of rehash some of those things I talked about in case you guys watch my channel 
didn't hear that. Okay, so number one, why did we move to base chain? Well, number one is because we believe pulse chain has failed so far, so far in quotes, all right? Because it's been about three months here, okay, at, at least since pulse has been live. And we've seen the hex price absolutely plummet. The hex price is basically nothing, okay? If you look at the chart, hex looks like the old BitConnect chart from the old BitConnect days, okay? I mean, it looks exactly the same, guys. If, if you want to find the BitConnect chart, this is literally the BitConnect chart. And this is when the cease and desist letters started coming in, okay? Except with hex, they can't really do that because it's decentralized. So all they can do is sue the owner in a SEC lawsuit, which is what they've done. All right, so that's hanging over us. That's hanging over Hex. It's hanging over Richard Hart. It's hanging over Pulse Chain. I don't know about you guys, but when I sacrificed to Pulse Chain, I was under the impression that it was going to be its own blockchain. See up here? See my little Tron Link wallet? That's what I thought we were getting. Okay, now that could have been my mistake. I didn't do enough research, but that's what I thought we were going to get. We were going to get a little Pulse Chain wallet just like this that ran only on Pulse Chain. It was going to have its own code language. It was going to have its own remix Ethereum style deployer where you could deploy smart contracts, its own code language, its own blockchain. Everything was going to be its own, but it was going to be a fork of Ethereum. It was basically going to be Ethereum where you would build the foundation and then everybody else could come in and build forks on top of your project as well. Okay, so there'd be EVM forks of Pulse Chain and there would be projects built on Pulse Chain. That's what I thought it was going to be. And if that is what they did, that is real value because that's where you have value, guys, in Ethereum. Because look at all the projects built on Ethereum. There's tons, EVM forks, projects, dApps, DEXs, you got it all. And what stands at the top? Ethereum, Ethereum ecosystem. That's what I thought Pulse Chain was gonna do. Now, they still could do that. They still could do that because they could still be working on that in the background. And when that goes live, they just transfer all the stuff from Pulse Chain that's on the EVM fork onto the actual mainnet Pulse Chain. That could still be in the works. I don't know. I kind of highly doubt that it is because it's been two years and two billion raised and we don't have it yet. So it sh really shouldn't take that long, guys. Tron didn't take that long. Okay, Solana doesn't take that long. All right, that's that's what I thought Pulse was going to be. It was going to be like a Tron, like a Solana, okay, like a Cosmos, that type of thing. But it's not. It's not. All it is is like a BSC chain, like an AVAX, like a Polygon, Binance Smart Chain. That's all it is, guys, with a little bit cheaper fees. And it's a little bit more decentralized because there's more nodes and there's more people running nodes to secure the network that are quote-unquote decentralized. Now, you don't know who actually owns those nodes that are running the network. It could be all the same person. It could be a few people with 10,000 different accounts. That's very possible. And that's actually what the SEC is alleging that Hex did, that Richard Hart did. Early on, when they had the Hex lobbies, where you would basically deposit your Ethereum into the Hex lobby every day, and at the end of the 24 hours, you would get a certain amount of Hex that you could claim. They alleged that every day, they would take the Ethereum raise, wash it around through different exchanges, and bring it back to their wallets, and send it in again to the Hex lobbies. And they would just recycle the ETH back and forth. So it looked like, oh man, people are coming in. There's good volume here. People are buying this. When really it was the same Ethereum from the start. And I alleged that myself from the start. Because I could look at that and then just go, yeah, this looks like they're just recycling the same Ethereum back and forth every time. Of course they deny that. Richard Hart denies that. Richard Hart Maxis deny that. I'm not a Richard Hart Maxi guys. I like Richard Hart. I think he's very smart. I think he's made some great products. I don't hate the guy, but I, I don't think he's God either. I don't think he's, you know, this genius that everybody proclaims. I really don't. He was an early investor in Bitcoin. He got rich off of Bitcoin. 
He made Hex. He got rich off a of Hex. He made Pulse Chain. He got rich off a of Pulse Chain. Yes, Hex did extremely well in the bull market. It was perfect timing. Okay, yes. At one point, you could have gotten a million Hex for one Ethereum. If you would have sold that at the top, that's half a million dollars. Yes, that did happen. A lot of people did that. I did not. So I'm not saying Hex was a failure at all. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that what the SEC is alleging is possibly true. And it's also true that Richard Hart has taken a lot of Ethereum from Hex and Pulse Chain, and mainly Pulse Chain, and we really don't have much to show for it. Pulse Chain's down 87%. It's half of what the sacrifice price was. If you guys go look on chain for Pulse Chain, feel free to do some investigation. There's tons of wallets holding tons of Pulse Chain. See the supply, guys? Do you see that supply? The fully diluted valuation is like $5 billion, okay? With, with an $18,000 trading volume? Are you kidding me? So the liquidity, number one, is not there on chain to back up all this supply. It's just not, guys. Okay, go on to PulseX. Try to, try to just put in a, a dummy trade for 20 or $30 million. It doesn't let you. It doesn't let you guys. The bridge, the bridge itself is kind of sketch because you don't know where that Ethereum is coming from, who's managing that Ethereum. You don't know anything, okay? You just basically have to trust that it's going to be there. I'm just sick of doing it. I'm just honestly sick of it. I'm sick of looking at the, the Pulse price every day, seeing it go down and down and down, building on Pulse, thinking that we're building up a nice little nest egg, and then... Bam, down 10% again today, down 20% again today. Oh man, new, another all-time low, okay? Yeah, if you scooped up this all-time low, congrats, great for you. But you know what? Most of us bought up around here. Most of us bought up around here, okay? Most of us bought up around here, okay? We didn't buy down here. Some of them, but not a lot of people, okay? A lot of us sacrificed early on, and our, our coins are not worth nearly what we sacrificed. Now, can that change in the future? Absolutely. Did I say I'm exiting Pulse Chain? No, I did not. Did I say I'm giving up on Pulse Chain? No, I did not either. I still believe in the future this all could turn around because it's a new technology. Like I said, if they decide to make their actual own blockchain, yes, this could become something. But right now, all it is is that cheap EVM fork. That's all it is. For $2 billion that we don't see the liquidity. See, I thought they were going to take a lot of that sacrifice funds and that was going to be the bridge. That was going to be liquidity for the bridge. But it's not. Liquidity for the bridge is, is, is barely any liquidity, guys. If someone wanted to come in with a billion dollars and bring it into Pulse, it's not possible. If someone wanted to buy a billion dollars of Ethereum, they could do that. Billion dollars of Bitcoin. Absolutely. Even a hundred million. hundred million dollars of Pulse. You're not going to be able to bring that in. Not even close. You don't know if you'll be able to get it back out. So... It's just a lot of stuff, guys, you know. Now, yes, is it growing pains for early on in an ecosystem? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean as, as a project building on that type of ecosystem that we have to put up with it. There's other things, guys. There's competition. And the best competition is the rank number two coin, Ethereum. Why are we going to dance around and test out all these other layer one, layer twos and this and that? You know, when we can just stick with the best, Ethereum. That's what all these layer twos are trying to do. Use Ethereum with cheap fees. But most of them have their own token, like Pulse Chain, like AVAX, like Banan Smart Chain, like Matic. You gotta trade your Ethereum for that coin. And then you're you're subjective to that coin going up or down. And it's like, well, I didn't really want that coin, I wanted the Ethereum. Yeah, you can use Ethereum on Pulse Chain, you can use Ethereum on Binance Smart Chain. But you have to have their gas token as well. It just gets kind of, it just gets iffy. So that really is what brought me to base and base chain. Okay. So base is a layer two solution, which is powered by Optimism, which is an open source code that they use to basically create this. It's scaled by Coinbase. It has the backing of Coinbase as well. 10 times cheaper than Ethereum. The really great thing about base, guys, is you go over here to the bridge, you're literally just bridging from your Ethereum to base, and you're getting 
ETH on base. Okay, you're you're gonna you actually use Ethereum. It makes sense to me because I take my Ethereum from the Ethereum network. I bridge it to base. Now I have that same Ethereum I'm using on base. I don't have to sell it for another coin. I don't have to convert it. I don't have to do anything. So all the Ethereum that is sent to base is backed one to one from the Ethereum that's sent. Okay, so all the liquidity is there. If you want to bridge over a billion dollars in Ethereum to base, it'll be there for you on the back end if you want to withdraw it from base because it's yours. And also you get to stick and use Ethereum for the dApps and for the ecosystem on base. You're not having to mess around with using their gas token, worrying about the gas token dumping. You're with the big dog. You're with Ethereum again. And it feels great. It feels nice. I can't tell you guys, you know, how nice that feels to just be back on Ethereum again. Because in the heyday of 2018, okay, if you guys were in crypto, you know that was the heyday of Ethereum dApps. That's when they really got big. Okay, decentralized applications. Number one, proof of weak hands. Proof of Week Hands 3D. That was the first of its kind back then. That's what you can relive, guys, with Base 3D. That's what we brought. That's what we brought to you guys. Okay, because if you guys missed out on that craze back in 2018, this is what you can take advantage of now. It's the same kind of thing. All right, so come over here and check out the white paper. This is what it's about. It's a single token smart contract exchange. Trading is done through the smart contract. You can purchase from or immediately sell back to the contract at any time. There's a 10% fee from every transaction to pay out token holders in the dividend system. You earn ETH in three dimensions when someone buys, sells, and uses your masternode link. The more base 3D tokens you hold, the more ETH you earn. This is a project for the crypto OGs. Like I said, remember back in February 2018, Proof of Week Hands 3D. Well, you can relive those glory days, guys. We're bringing it back. We're bringing it back, okay? I miss those times. I miss those days. Okay, the days in crypto right now are not very fun. It, it was very fun back in the day. There was volume to go around. People were just jumping into things. Not like today. Everybody just wants to trade trade meme coins on the exchanges and, and get into a meme coin early and pump and dump on everybody. That's all everybody wants to do now. Nobody wants to get into real protocols and real technology. This proof of weak hands protocol that is built here is very revolutionary guys i can't tell you enough how amazing this actually is it was way ahead of its time proof of weak hands was the first ever dex on ethereum it was created before uniswap there was no uniswap the only way you could trade ethereum tokens was on an exchange these projects would raise money in ico and they would list their token on an exchange and that's how you would trade it there was no DEX. There was no Uniswap until Proof of Week Hands came out where you could literally buy the token through your MetaMask wallet decentrally on their DAP and then hold it and then earn from everybody else buying in and selling. It's the coolest system ever, guys. Honestly, you really need to just dive in and, and look at the mechanics of how this works. Okay, it, it is very, very cool. All right, it's simple, but it's also very complex. I'm telling you, it's, it's, we, we want to keep this type of technology alive. That's, that's really another reason why we're doing this. Okay. Because those guys really built something truly incredible. Okay. That smart contract still stands today, guys. If you go over here to the audit section, that's what our audit is. Okay. It's based off of this code. So you don't have anything to worry about. Okay. Do you think if this code was exploitable? Someone would take advantage and exploit this 4 million sitting in here. It's still sitting in here, guys. You know, this is just something to take a look at. This is, this is exactly how the base 3D code is. If this could have been hacked. It would have been done by now. This, this thing's been out for going on five, six years. It's still here. So we want to relive those type of glory days. Okay. And that's what I want to do. And I, I don't want to do it on onto these other chains and, and have my value in, in Binance, Smart Chain, or Pulse, or AVAX, or Matic. Why would I do that when you have, we have Base Chain now, where your value is held in Ethereum? That's awesome. So that's literally like Proof of Week Hands again. You get to hold in Ethereum and earn Ethereum divs. 
and pay way less gas fees to do so. That's an opportunity. That's an opportunity, guys. So, yeah, feel free to read through the white paper here, guys. And you guys can take a look because it's just some awesome, awesome stuff. All right. Feel free to see, you know, exactly how this works if you're not familiar with this. But it's very simple. Okay. You just buy in, you hold, and you earn dividends. You can reinvest or you can withdraw your dividends. You can sell your tokens at any time. You can get referral with masternode links. Okay. If you need to learn how to bridge the base, it's very simple. Okay. Number one, you just follow these steps. There's three steps. First, connect your wallet to base. Okay, you go over here, chainlist.org. You would type base into here. So you just type base. You press add to MetaMask. Once it's added to MetaMask, now you have base on your MetaMask. Now you're going to switch your wallet back to Ethereum. Back here to step two, go to the bridge, which I showed you guys over here. This is the bridge. So when you have Ethereum in your wallet on the Ethereum network, you then bridge it to base. You follow the steps, press deposit, complete the transaction. Wait about three to five minutes, switch your wallet back to the base network, and you will see your Ethereum on the base network. Super simple, guys. Couldn't be more simple to bridge over. Okay, so that's very easy. Very easy to do that. So guys, what is the real opportunity here with base 3D? Well, number one, DAP radar. All right, so if you scroll down, you're going to see base chain supported pulse chain is not supported on here anywhere you know makes you kind of wonder why makes you kind of wonder why so base chain is newly supported so that's good a lot of these protocols and these websites are supporting base chain which is a great sign to me so you can see on here guys there's not very much stuff on base it's a great opportunity great potential okay there's like 70 projects on here okay not very many if you notice right here, number 39, base 3D, guys. Here we are. Okay. So fully listed. And yeah, this is this is awesome because the volume is gonna come into base, guys. People, I'm telling you, people just don't know about this yet. And they really just they, there's always pushback for new chains. I found myself doing that. When a new chain would come out, it's like, oh man, another one? Really, another one? But when I actually looked into base chain, just using Ethereum, that's awesome to me. It really is. So there's just great opportunity, guys. Okay. See, we have a great opportunity here. There's only two dApps on the high risk section because this is technically high risk, but it's really not because the team and myself, we got in early and we're holding. We have strong hands as you've seen with Pulse 3D. Okay, we're not trying to rug anybody. That's why we gave refunds for Mixer Token. But we're in, it, we're in this for the long term. We want to be with something that will be here for the long term. That's why we're sticking with Ethereum. Like I said, still not exiting Pulse Chain, but I just want to be with the number one, the number one crypto of this kind. Okay, now also, huge, huge news. DeFi Llama, they're supporting base. You see the volume here? Total value locked for base. A lot of great stuff, guys. Also, scroll down. You'll see. Here we are, base 3D. We're being tracked by DeFi Llama. Huge, huge opportunity. Okay. When the inflow comes in to base, to base chain, they're going to be looking for projects and things to get into. How are they going to find it? They're going to go to DeFi Llama. They're going to go to DAP Radar. We are super, super early here on base chain. That's why we decided to build on it because in crypto, it's about taking advantage of the opportunity that's in front of you and when to jump in and when to jump out. And you want to be able to jump in early before the masses catch on. You want to already be in the protocols when the masses catch on and they realize, man, this is actually pretty cool. Okay, I remember back when PancakeSwap first started, a lot of pushback. People, they didn't really know about it. Okay, they're like, oh, uh, Binance made its own chain, so what? And you see how great that did. Base chain's gonna do that, but a whole lot more, guys. I'm telling you, the next one to two months, this blockchain, this layer two here, is going to blow up, okay? It's gonna blow up. You wanna be with the projects early on before the masses come in, before people really understand 
what the opportunity here is. And that's when you want to get in. You don't want to wait when it's already at the top to get in. I've done that before. I've done that plenty of times. So now is when you want to get in. When people don't understand it, when people think it's it's not worth it, when people don't like the chain, that's when you want to get in. So that's it, guys. You know, if you have Ethereum sitting in your wallet, test it out. That's all I did. I tested it out. I bridged some over to base. I saw how easy it was. I used the DAP. I saw how nice it was to be in Ethereum again. It's just, it's a nice feeling, guys. You know, it really, really is. And, you know, being in Ethereum is where I want to be. I don't want to just be sitting in some other, you know, gas token on some other network when Ethereum pumps up to $10,000, $20,000, $100,000, $100, and there's other chains just stay where they are. You think they're just going to follow Ethereum? No, they're not. If you, if you go take all the EVM forks and if you take all the, the volume and liquidity on those forks and moved it back to Ethereum, man, Ethereum would would go up to $100,000, $50,000. It'd be, it'd be right there with Bitcoin. So that's what BASE is aiming to do, guys. That's what really their, their goal is for this in the long run. They want to bring volume and liquidity back to the Ethereum network, but they want to help the people that don't want to pay those fees. So how can you do that? Base chain, easy, okay? Take your liquidity, your crypto on those other chains, buy Ethereum with it, bridge it to base chain and use base chain. Simple, simple as that guys, okay? You can see, okay, I have these 2,485 tokens. The math on this guys is exactly the same as proof we can't. So this is proof of we cans early on with less than one Ethereum in the contract. Do you guys want like a good opportunity? Because I know I do. So I'm going to be in here. I'm going to be reinvesting and compounding. Super simple, super safe contract here, guys. If for any reason the website goes down, you can interact with the contract directly. Okay, I'll make a video on how to do that in the future. But for now, I just want to just throw this out there so you guys can take a look at it. Because I'm telling you guys, this is where you want to be. At least just put a, a percentage in here, okay? Because you don't have to worry about it. You're in Ethereum. If you're going to hold Ethereum, you might as well hold a little bit in here. Because you earn dividends off of it. And if you ever need it, you can get to it at any time. This isn't a Ponzi, guys. This, this, this is an hourglass. So whatever you put in here, especially at this low levels, guys, of the contract. Yes, if this is already pumped to... 7, 70, 100 Ethereum, 1,000 Ethereum. You know, yeah, it, it would be a little bit more of a risk because it's already pumped up that big. When it's this small, there's a little, literally only one way this can go, guys. <laughs> it really can only go up because the founders and the people behind this holding, they're holding, so there's nothing to really dump the price. It's just really going to just keep going up. Like I said, take a look. If you have Ethereum already in your MetaMask, or even if you have it in your ledger, you can use it through your MetaMask. Super easy. Bridge a little bit over to base. It'll take you five minutes. Put some in here. Just take a chance. Because, you know, maybe one day, a year from now, you'll look back and go, man, this thing's at 700 Ethereum in here. And it was at half an Ethereum. Can you imagine how much value your tokens will be worth? You never know, guys. You never know. Okay. There's still 2,000 Ethereum in here. <laughs> it's it's insane. It really is insane. So this is your chance, guys. This is your chance to relive those glory days. If you weren't around during those glory days, well, now you have the first chance to actually live some of that and taste some of that. So that's really it, guys. Really don't have much more to talk about. This is a long video as it is. So I do really appreciate you guys listening in. And I hope you guys can take some of that advice. It's not financial advice, of course. It's just friendly advice. And just throwing out the facts. Throwing out the facts, guys. So you guys do with it what you want. I really appreciate you guys listening and subscribing. And until the next time, we'll talk again. Creative Crypto, out.